buffers and the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Okay, so we're going to turn the conversation just a little bit and talk about buffers. So what is a buffer? It's a solution of approximately equal concentrations of either a weak acid and its conjugate base, so you're going to have a conjugate acid-base pair, or a weak base and its conjugate acid. And those are going to be in approximately equal concentrations, and they do not need to be exactly equal in order to be a buffer. Now, buffers that are made from a weak acid and its conjugate base, those are called acidic buffers. And so the pH is going to be between 0 and a little less than 7. A buffer made from a weak base and its conjugate acid is going to be a basic buffer with a pH higher than 7. Now, what is the purpose of a buffer? A buffer resists changes in pH due to small additions of acid or base. And so we set up a buffer so that when there are small additions of either acid or base, the pH doesn't change very much. Now, the easiest way to calculate the pH of a buffer solution is to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And that's this guy right here. Okay, you may see another form of it where the log term is subtracted and these two are inverted. But we're going to stick with this version of the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And so what does everything mean in here? So here's the pH of your buffer. Here's the pKa of the acid used to make the buffer. So even if it's a basic buffer, you're still going to use the acid form and use the pKa. And then you're going to add on this log term where you've inserted the concentration of the conjugate base and the concentration of the weak acid. And remember, those are going to be approximately equal. And so basically, we're always going to use this equation for acidic and basic buffers. So it doesn't matter which one it is, you're always going to use the pKa for the conjugate acid-base pair. Okay, let's do an example because that's the easiest way to discuss this. So we're going to calculate the pH of a buffer that's made from 0.28 molar nitrous acid and 0.23 molar nitrite. So notice this is a conjugate acid-base pair and the concentrations are approximately equal. The Ka for nitrous acid is 4.6 times 10 to the negative 4. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is calculate the pKa for the acid. So remember, just take the negative log of the Ka, and you're going to get the pKa, which is going to be 3.34. Next, we're going to plug in the concentrations of our acid and conjugate base. And so if we go up here and we find 0.28 molar nitrous acid, let's go ahead and plug that in for HA, and 0.23 molar for nitrite, plug that in, and when we do the math, 3.34 plus this log term, we're going to get 3.25. So that is the pH of our buffer. Now, what happens to the pH of this buffer if we add some hydrochloric acid? And so what we're going to do is add the acid, see what happens to the concentrations of each of these two species, and then we're going to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation again to get the pH after this addition of hydrochloric acid. And we're going to add 0.05 molar HCl. Now one thing very important to keep in mind is that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. So that means it's going to react completely and immediately with the conjugate base to form weak acid. So this proton is just going to be donated in equal concentrations. So for every one of these, you're going to make one of these. All right. So you are going to convert nitrite to nitrous acid after this addition of hydrochloric acid. Now, since we added 0.05 molar hydrochloric acid, then that means 0.05 molar of the conjugate base is going to be used up. It's going to react with that hydrochloric acid. It's going to accept that proton, 
and it's going to form an additional 0.05 molar of the weak acid nitrous acid. So we can show that in the Henderson-Hasselbeck equation by here's our base form. So we started with 0.23 molar and we used up 0.05 molar of it so we get 0.18 molar and in the denominator we have 0.28 that was our initial we gained an extra 0.05 and so that's going to give us 0.33 and when we do the math and 3.34 plus this log term log of 0.18 divided by 0.33 we're going to get 3.08 and the pH of our original buffer was 3.25. This buffer resisted a pH change due to the addition of acid. Now we can see that it changed a little bit, but in order to really appreciate the fact that it didn't change very much, even though it changed a little bit, let's compare it to adding strong acid to pure water. So, if we take our 0.05 molar hydrochloric acid solution, we learn that the concentration of hydronium in solution is 0.05 molar. So hydrochloric acid reacts completely. So if we have 0.05 molar hydrochloric acid, the concentration of hydronium for this strong acid is 0.05 molar, and there's essentially none of the strong acid left. So if we plug that into our equation, negative log of 0.05 molar, we get a pH of 1.30. So if you have pure water and you add strong acid to the concentration of 0.05 molar, then that is a very large pH change. We went from 7 to 1.3, just with that small amount of hydrochloric acid, where our buffer resisted a, a large pH change. It went from 3.25 to 3.08, which is a very small change compared to pure water. Okay, so example problems for the acid-base chapter will be posted separately.